Hello and welcome to Talking Bottom. This week we're doing Bottom Live, the stage show, the very first one recorded in 1993. I'm Ange Johnson. I'm Matt Brooks. And I'm Paul Tanter. So 93 it came out. Recorded then on the 27th of December, I think it says on Wikipedia. Yeah, so the show had done two series before this in 91 and 92. Then they had the live show in 93. I don't Mm -hmm. know how many shows they'd done before they did the recording at the theatre in Southampton, but that is... Obviously, the recording that the majority of people would have seen. Mm. Yeah, this this version. I know they did a um, big one in Hammersmith as well. Did you guys see the going live appearance of Rick and yeah. I <laughs> to promote. Yeah, this talk- yeah, yeah. I, I kind of remember that from the time, but I've also since rewatched it on YouTube. It's mm. on YouTube. It's it's well worth a look. We'll put the link. It was uh, actually the very last episode of Going Live. So oh, was it really? They could have called all the kids cunts. Oh, <laughs> and it'd been fine. yeah. They but, could have burned uh, the house didn't. down, yeah. and that, that no one would have been able to do anything yeah. about it. It, it was an unusual choice. It seemed to have, yeah. but I suppose it was Hangover TV, the same as any of those kids' programs. Yeah, been. So so. target but, market wasn't the kids it would yeah. have been the parents people don't know it was a saturday morning show on bbc or itv i'm not 100%. bbc one mm. bbc one it's a kids show and for some god knows reason they got rick and aid on to promote bottom live where you have to be 18 to buy a ticket <laughs> back, back in 93 there must have been some overworked underpaid yeah. pr person who Absolutely. was desperately trying to get them some show to plug the mm. live show and she comes to them sweating going i've got you something great it's a bbc one program oh brilliant is it wogan no it's it's <laughs> let's live it's what sorry going live yeah. but obviously we were kids watching it so we were interested oh, and the therefore, well up for we it, would yeah. have been well to i don't remember going live going out on that interview and yeah. i don't remember being aware of the tour happening no, at that, I, I at that age yeah. right. it's me only me either actually the after first... it happened that yeah. i was gutted when you saw the video and you're like yeah. oh my gosh like, i'd love to have seen that the live. first one i saw was actually bottom live two and then well, was bottom live one mm. while after mm. like i was basically borrowing vhs's from people that yeah point. I, mean, I didn't own everything yet and and that had that big 18 yeah it was on like the front which meant a lot more back then i swear maybe just because i couldn't buy anything so, of that uh, with that on but I didn't get bottom live for quite yeah. a while so the reason it's 18 is because they use the F and C word mm. really now they don't use it anywhere near as much as I remember no it's not as sweary as you would think mm. for... but South Park much worse yeah when I rewatched it for this podcast I was surprised at how little swearing there was and you're right they only say this they drop the C-bomb twice maybe three times they say the word fuck a few times but yeah. it's not like goodfellas it's not like a tarantino no, not film at all. you know not at all that would only make the comedy suffer though so yeah, again so, it's yeah. the strength of the writing that they're but not yeah, just it's, relying it's not on the swears one. this is the one that they have worse swear words on and they're on a kid's show promoting it it's <laughs> so, so weird. do you remember trev and simon oh, yeah. there's a brilliant fake <laughs> argument that they have and is like basically Trevor Simon. Well, we're going on tour as well, and they're like, "Well, you can't be on tour at the same time as us. You'd have to cancel yours." Right? They're saying like, "Well, there's a brilliant bit where Rick's like, well, what's the best joke in your show?' Then <laughs> <laughs> is it where you swing your pants? Yeah, there's a few kids phoning in asking questions and stuff. There's oh. there's a cringe cringe tastic moment where some kid phones up to do a Vivian impression. What yeah. he says, and he's like, "Okay, I don't need to impression." Oh. All I was retrieved by my mother was my old service revolver and blah, 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 blah. And then Rick, <laughs> Rick Mayall says, well, that's Eddie. That's not yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so firstly, your voice sounds like a subpar zippy from Rainbow. Yes. And secondly, you're not even doing the right character's yeah. dialogue. Is this over-enthusiastic uh, kids. It's like, oh, I love the young ones. Uh, it's absolutely brilliant. Is there any chance you can do another series of that? And Rick really calmly and pleasantly says well basically um you know we relied on ben elton for that now he's busy off being famous in his own right and so mm. i've run my own stuff with with aid now and what we write together is bottom so um it's now bottom it's not young one and the kid was like oh I was so <laughs> upset you and were... you could, could almost hear booze in the bed and like what you entitled little shit <laughs> oh my goodness i have to rewatch that again because it's been a while we'll yeah. put the link up it's uh yeah. it's fucking well it's well funny so what other tv shows did this sort of thing that would have a live yeah thing of it you know I, trying I, to think i was trying to think of this the other day and i can't think 
of any comparable ones that have done anything like it. In the 90s. Not in the 90s, sure. Mm. Sitcom-wise, not really anything. Uh, Things I could find. uh, League of Gentlemen, that's not quite accurate because it was actually staged first. They did Mm. an Edward show and they got picked up for radio and then did a TV series. Far Show done one, actually. Yeah, but... Not a sitcom, though. But again, the Far Show, the show itself was just a series of sketches. So then the stage show, Mm -hmm. I mean, it it was a good representation Mm -hmm. of the TV show, but it was essentially just a sketch show on stage wasn't yeah, it yeah and in more recent years Little Britain went on tour mm. oh yes Little Britain um, um, Mighty Boosh have done it yes yeah in fact I think mostly it's sketch that lends exactly, itself yeah. to going live yeah. I mean have you considered why you think that is then that Rick and A decided to take it on tour well I'm sure A because they knew they would make a lot of money but B because this live show especially this one proves how much Bottom is suited to a stage play format for most of their episodes. In this one, it's a total two-hander, and it's set entirely within the confines of the flat, mm-hmm. and a little room in the flat as well. Yeah. Not even no mm-hmm. bedroom. Yeah. yeah, not the hallway. Nothing yeah. like that. Yeah, and that's a strength of the writing, and but also to the simplicity of the show itself in the way they set it and staged it. And I know we talked about this before, but there are so many episodes that you could take literally the script and make it into a stage play without and then, any changes without yeah. no, with no changes whatsoever and there's quite a few of the episodes where you could take it and just <laughs> amend it ever so slightly and it would still work on mm. stage I would say that it's because Rick and Aid were so very comfortable on stage with their characters of the Dangerous Brothers yeah. in the young ones they probably didn't find that same relationship that they yeah. then found when they wrote Richie and Eddie yeah. yes Vivian and Rick were fantastic at the way they tussled with each other but you couldn't take them on tour no. because you'd need so many other people and all that. but because this was Aid and Rick's animal yeah. bottom was now something they could completely own they could write it for stage which was going back to the days of them being on on stage at the comic strip yeah. I think there's actually a few references in the live show to some sketches from the Dangerous Brothers days oh really yeah the, there's a few things that I'd seen previously in a Dangerous Brothers sketch or in the young ones there's one uh-huh, two things both my legs, yes you know. I'll bring that down there <laughs> yeah. but overall it's 95% new material when they could have phoned it in and just yeah, given yeah. A, a, they could have reenacted an episode and people yeah. would have gone if any, yeah, there was only one or two instances where I thought oh you've done that before in the show if anything it was usually an instance of oh this is a line that I know I know they shot and then deleted it such as the line from Digger or oh this is something that they then reused in series 3 mm-hmm. at which point you you then go well you, series 3 was a bit thin in places so that they were cannibalizing yeah. material at that point my legs yeah. is from young ones isn't it the uh, the oil episode it's from it's from the young ones but i'm mm-hmm. pretty sure i've seen the miss both my legs in a dangerous brothers sketch as well no, i really? think it's obviously it's a great joke it is a great <laughs> gag isn't yeah. it and they repeat the shake and make up thing as well don't they yeah, this? Yeah. yes and and great gag afterwards so they're obviously not afraid of repeating good yeah. material and they seem to delight in it in fact but yeah. I, I would also say that some of the sketch sort of elements of how they used to perform beforehand they were probably feeling frustrated not to have the live audience in the same way right, yeah. when they were filming Young Ones and Bottom like obviously you've got the audience but yeah. that's the joy of watching Bottom Live you yeah. can really really see how they feed off that oh, audience yeah. energy absolutely yeah. I mean they are both great showmen obviously Rick is the absolute consummate mm. show off but both of them the way <laughs> they interact with and feed off the audience is mm. fantastic oh, they mm. do it in character as well yeah. which is brilliant they get annoyed and frustrated mm. that the other yeah. one's getting laughs and we're like stop talking to the ordinary people <laughs> yeah. and things like that <laughs> which I mean, shows what that is an exaggeration of their personalities yeah. Yeah. is how they've written the characters in the first place but they're so comfortable on stage yeah. that it doesn't phase them at all to just completely go with it and yeah completely uh, at home with it with it not a single fluff of any of the lines ever hmm. uh, as uh, they unless yeah. they're <laughs> in deep, I mean in bottom no, live yeah. it wasn't quite the same as yeah. when it goes further down the line on the lives and yeah. they were actually writing in these sort of ad yeah. and, 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 so and fuck yeah, ups definitely purposely definitely wanted to talk about this this, this is a why I would I really wish there was either a script of the show available or another recording of it, because then mm. you could compare the two and go, right, this part was, you know, a fluff. In the later live shows, there was stuff that they would write in that were fluffs mm. that they would then pretend they'd fluffed. And they, because yeah. they know the audience love that kind of thing. Yeah. As an audience member, you see them fuck up and you think it's something unique. We're the only ones seeing this. This bit will never happen again. But then you also wonder whether maybe these things happen genuinely on yeah. one show at the tour, but, and then from then on they redo right, it right. because but it got it such be a the great reaction. Of it. Yeah. Well, I saw the fourth one live in person and there there's some stuff that was in the DVD as well, mm. word for 
for word exactly the same. Right, right, yeah. yeah. And it really took it away from it a bit, you know? And it shouldn't, should it? Because the rest of it's scripted and, of course, yeah. it's it's funny, so why not have it written in? But it, it takes away some of that magic. But on the night, I mean, you can see how much the audience are just absolutely delighting in yeah. the fact that... Um, a, a fuck up's gone wrong or someone's yeah. forgotten their line or putting it on there's a sense of like excitement watching it because you know as a kid you kind of go to pantomimes and stuff so you're aware of what the live performance of the show is like yeah, it's mm. very panto actually yeah isn't it and like to, for, you know it opens with the the shots of the theater and those fucking bozos in, <laughs> the, in, the, in the audience that does that as well all the rest yeah. do away with that i think that was kind of a thing of of the time how they used to do it and what you know richie and eddie are very timeless uh, mm. the way they're dressed yeah but the audience fucking aren't are the they? audience mm. looks so 90 yeah. I mean, the, in fact a lot of them look late 80s i know it's yeah. like 93 they don't look like they're being to bottom there's yeah. some like middle-aged housewife type people yeah. who are fucking cracking up you know, right? <laughs> that's great though yeah, don't you think like, it's lovely like to yeah. see the age range in yeah. that audience through constant overwatching of that video through the 90s I came to know not only by heart a lot of the show, mm. but what those pricks at the beginning said. And I would gr- I grew to hate those people who <laughs> yeah. were interviewed at the beginning. Firstly, because they were the fan representation of the show mm, yeah. that I loved. And I thought, no, that should be me they're talking to. But also, so there's rude, one of them. Uh, there is friend. no better yeah. physical humour. Get your fucking words out, you fool. <laughs> I just think that ace. Just absolutely excellent. I'll so, fuck off. The thing of, it is, of course, those were the best ones. Yeah, yeah. What did you throw away? Yeah. Well, maybe they were the best of a very bad bunch we'll, we'll never know <laughs> I wonder why they chose Southampton not Hammersmith to film I think it must be a practicality of the venue and getting cameras yeah. in and stuff like that it doesn't have to be the best audience the biggest place is yeah. just what well, it could fit in schedule wise yeah. you know it's. I suppose we've not touched upon the fact that lots of stand-ups went on tour and that's how you made your money and even more so now but that, yeah. that's how you make your money isn't it so it is unusual that a sitcom yeah. duo did it but it isn't yeah. that unusual because I think in Steve Coogan's The Man Who Thinks He's It there was lots of little oh, was great. Yeah. lots of little cutaways but that, that had the jokes, audience they? yeah yeah, yeah. They, were, they were tongue in cheek cutaways scripted yeah. specifically for the yeah. video yeah. and in between so it was a very 90s thing that was but, again a bit of a delight to oh, watch when you got like the Live and Lude you see Live and Lude it had um Steve Coogan dressed up as the audience members mm. so, yeah like, oh, right. <laughs> the yeah. disguise okay. yeah most British sitcoms that had done something outside of their sitcom format up to this point, it was always the, we'll do a film version of it. Mm. And 99% of the time it would be shit. So on the buses, Rising Damp, um, League of Gentlemen, League of, Gen- League of Gentlemen, Terrible. I mean, yeah. I know that was after this, but usually the film. Yeah, we'd rubbish. do a film version. Yeah. Had, I, I'm, I like the League of Gentlemen, but I, but the film, the, oh, no, the film, film had some good. very, very bad, bad moments right. in yeah. it, but I think it had some good ones as well. But interesting that the the Rick and Aid went for a live show rather this than a film. This could have been a film, actually. This plot, mm. plot in heavy <laughs> uh, inverted commas, <laughs> um, which they do say. They as well, mention themselves. They? Yeah, fair yeah. enough. Fair enough. But yeah, it. To be honest, this could have been stripped right back and been an episode lengthwise. Mm. You know, the the pacing of it is very fucking slow. Mm. You know, it's very it is, slow, really. Yeah. Um, as a result of having to stretch it out. Yeah. It's a reasonable bottom plot that mm. could make a good 30 minute episode. And as we've always said, most simple plots work. But obviously, it's elongated for the purposes of sh- of getting in a lot mm. of gags mm. and also to allow for interaction with the audience mm. and for sections of overacting. But also, <laughs> it's got some little bits in there that are essentially little sketches on their own that mm. you, you could take them out and drop them into another show or, or, and so forth. Some of the fights are sort of good little set pieces. But as I say, there are little bits that are kind of mm. like... Rick's part later on when he's talking about French newspapers and the pullouts and that kind of thing. That's almost like a bit of stand-up to the audience because mm. at that point, he's, he's addressing the audience and he's, he's almost broken character. And Absolutely. that's like a little bit dropped in. It's yeah. a wonderful little monologue about like the, the, the classy birds yeah. and the models in, in the Observer supplement. It did occur to me how many of the lines that I quote from Bottom today disproportionately seem to come from this live show. Things like the special K line, it keeps you fit and it makes you poo regularly, your shit looking like it came straight from a Canadian logging camp, and referring mm. to going to the toilet as being on the plop. Now I realise all three of these things are referring to shitting, but <laughs> that's probably appropriate because the show is Bottom. Well it's weird that how much you forgive the lack of plot in these live shows. Them addressing it, I think, helps a lot. But just oh. basic story structure yeah. type things. How you start off, you start with the status quo, mm. life as normal, and then an inciting incident mm. starts the, the story going. The inciting incident, I suppose, is the delivery of the mail. Yeah. 
that <laughs> takes a while to get fucking to. half hour in. Mm-hmm. Right. That's a long time. That's really sloppy. And the show itself is about 100 minutes long, isn't it? So, And that's the length of a long feature film. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, including credits, I think it's an hour and 45 minutes or right, something. It's, right. Yeah, it's a long old show. It does feel like it's dragging in terms of the plot development. But when you're there watching Rick yeah. and Aiden just enjoying it, like it, it doesn't feel like it drags because everyone in the room was just there to see Rick and Aid live anyway. As you say, yeah. they could have literally come on and done a karaoke version yeah. of one of the episodes they'd already written and everyone would be just as happy to watch it, probably. Yeah. Mm. It's weird how they kind of set up a bunch of traditions for the live shows that are in the first one and then in every single one. Oh, yeah. Like, like, for oh. example, Richie always enters first. Mm. Every yes. single one. Yeah. Then he has a little bit of stuff on his own, about a minute or two, and then Eddie comes in. So they each get a solo applause, yeah. I suppose. Yeah, it's about four minutes before Aid enters. Yeah. It? Right. You know, they're wearing radio mics on their ties. Yeah? Right, okay. And, well, and as a kid, I thought their ties had frayed and something had gone <laughs> right, wrong. Right, okay. The, the costumes are slightly different in this one, I think. Eddie's wearing braces as part of his suit, as a minor thing. I, uh, and I, I think it's the first time Richie's wearing the big pants. Okay. I think. I'm not sure. Like, he does wear big pants, but them coming out over his... Oh, I see. Short, so, uh, yeah. Over his um, we, shirt and stuff. We, That's we, in Series 3 a lot. We've but. seen him wear big pants yeah. already in Series 2, like mm. uh, in the Digger episode. Yeah. But he hasn't had them pulled up over his stomach. Yeah, right, absolutely. Okay. I think that mm. debuts here. I'm not 100%. I should have looked that up. Maybe if I was doing a professional podcast, <laughs> <laughs> I, I should have done. I know what you mean. The characterization of Richie having his underwear pulled yeah. up is... is Probably something that came from the costume department yeah. somewhere between series two and uh, and the live show. Uh, Eddie's got his wedding ring on again. Fuck that. Oh, it? Yeah, yeah, I was oh, going to mention that as a little oh, niggle. I didn't know. I wasn't. Yeah. I wasn't looking at yeah. his hands that closely this yeah, time. Yeah, Aid's wearing his ring throughout. Oh, okay, yeah, the whole thing. He, maybe he doesn't trust the security of the uh, Southampton Theatre. I'm not leaving it in there. It's the uh, the set's very good, isn't it? Particularly uh, when you consider the set on series three, which isn't as yeah. good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. the uh, series one and two it's been very faithfully recreated yeah, it's, and it's bigger yeah. larger than life but I wonder whether it wouldn't be space. the same production team would it I surely because it's not the BBC that have put this on tour yeah I don't think it would have been the exact same but they probably would have had some kind of you know input hey you know can mm. I get a list of what you used or you know can I look at the designs yeah, or something it's really really faithfully it's, redone also the one in series three looked and felt a little bit cheap whereas this Larger version to give them more room. Very faithful version to the original. Elvis is there. Elvis is there. Yeah. Different picture. Of well, different Elvis. picture of Elvis, but uh, there's still Elvis right. still, in a frame. They can change Elvis every now and again. That's yeah. fine. But, like everything in there, very good, functional. You know, like uh, the fridge has the smoke coming out of it. Mm. There's the gag with the plant where it drops and smoke comes out. Yeah. You know, everything on stage is very effectively used. Yeah, and, and it, early on you get the sparks flying as well, don't yeah. you? From yeah. Rick, yeah. like kind of trying to sort the electrics even a window for which aid is able to jump out which i thought was a lovely touch which is a shame they never did more of that in the tv show considering that's where they could have probably done that more you know i suppose so yeah because you'd think it'd be harder to do the cartoon elements live on stage they yeah. do pull it off then what do you think they use special k for would they have needed rights for that do you think do you know <laughs> oh. i guess the demographic of special k is so not Richie Neddy, they used that for that purpose. You know what I mean? They, yeah. uh, Those Special K adverts in the 90s were famous. They were, they? yeah. Famously annoying yeah. and very, very shit. Well, so, see, if smug people mm. would eat them, so I suppose Richie would kind of think he's that type of person. Yeah. Like the way he tries to eat you with a knife and fork. Did you notice that? <laughs> and when he breaks both of his legs on it, that's some yeah. great physical comedy. This whole show is filled with great physical comedy from both of them, but you're right, that mm. leg-breaking thing that Rick does is just fantastic. I mean, it's got it's, rickets or yeah. something. <laughs> it's it, odd. A lot of what they do in, in this stage show is slightly over the top, but deliberately so because it's, a, you know, they can be slightly theatrical because they're on stage. But that is just, and the, the way that Rick commits to then <laughs> hobbling around on the sides of his ankles, it basically. Painful, it's painful, doesn't it? Painful. Yeah. And then when he's, uh, so he's smashing the hell out of the, the brick and then he moves it behind the uh, table to give it a few punches, <laughs> obviously where he swaps it out for uh, yeah. the broken one, which he holds together. And the use of the stage when Aid does that fantastic run up to the help break it. it. Yeah. 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 When you watch this for the first time, were you aware of when they put the teeth in their mouth? Because I remember oh, no, actually, watching it going, oh, you, oh, I can see Rick putting something in his mouth. Mm. I still can't see when and Eddie does it. Okay. So, but but Rick puts it in his mouth quite early on, and then still delivers quite a few lines with it in his mouth. Sure. 
but without you hearing that he's got something in his mouth. Mm. And then they get to the bite and, you know, have so to spit out. So the tooth gag, that's also uh, reused in dough, yeah. isn't it? The spitting out, spitting out, spitting out, spitting out, spitting out. The scrambled egg prop as well is mm. sufficiently disgusting. Oh, yeah. Sort of like a skid mark mm. on the side of the newspaper. <laughs> what Can you tell me what a sausage that's been digested twice looks like? Uh, it w- a lump of shit. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, he paints a wonderfully visceral yeah. image of everything that's in that fridge, doesn't mm. he? A yogurt reference that I think is almost a callback to the doesn't taste like banana and pink. Yeah. And there's a yeah. piece of useless human excrement in there, but that might actually just be Graham Taylor. Graham Taylor, who's a footballer. Who well, at the Ooh, time he, manager. He, he was the England football manager who was getting like a lot of shit okay. in the press. So that was like the topical gag for the current mm. day. And doesn't they, translate now. There's a couple of those, not too many. There's Graham a Taylor one as well, isn't there? Mike Gatting, yeah. and then mm. there's the Saddam. Hussein will dump you on the curds which yeah. well, that, I think that one's not so timely though no we? going like that would have a bit, a bit of shelf life at the time because well, they're at historical war historical yeah. thing as well people will remember that more than, yeah. than the football manager the reference to the hotel in Scarborough when they say oh better than the hotel we stayed in Scarborough I got that joke at the time that was because there was a hotel that had basically fallen into the sea because the cliff had collapsed oh, oh yeah. I didn't know that I just thought they were taking piss out of Scarborough <laughs> Of, hair of the dog he's like no I think it's a pube well, how do he get a pube in his mouth <laughs> is he sucking himself off or is he putting well, his that's no, filthy isn't he, it so why yeah. is there pubes hanging about well I suppose he's yeah he's from the bin. Naked in uh, the yeah, living room he got the special K from the bin so you know mm. maybe maybe he'd been trimming his pubes and like mm. thrown them in the bin or something I love that again in the world of bottom the bin is a source of all nourishment and food mm, yeah. it's like you've no, you've made a conscious decision this is no good. I'm throwing it away. But then later, oh no, maybe I'll change my mind and yeah. <laughs> go through. I mean, it's essentially like a sketch, the breakfast sequence. But that's the first time in the show that any of them actually acknowledge the audience, which is after Richie passes out and uh, Eddie slaps him, he does the, oh good, he's coming round. Mm. That's the first sort of nod okay. to the audience. And I, I think probably for the audience is the first indication of, oh good, uh, they might do a few asides here. You know, yeah. they're, they're going to acknowledge mm. that they're in a show. That, oh, what, what was that? Oh, nothing, just to the side. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I've told you before, do not talk to the ordinary people. That's, yeah. that's that bit, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, they love playing with the fourth wall breaking, yeah. don't they? Because it, it's the first time that you're actually getting that response from the audience properly from, yeah. from their reactions. Yeah, because Richie's normal uh, monologues and flights of fantasy are adapted to mm. him literally talking to the audience. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Normally, it's only Eddie who will break the fourth wall with a little look and get yeah. mm. They both do in this. They what talk- are we going to do the plot, by the way? Well, oh, what plot? Oh, I, oh, actually, <laughs> no, we, we um, do that? We can, oh. we, no, well, I suppose we can. I'll, Just have, sort of... I'll have to read it from um, Wikipedia, though. Following a weekend lock-in at the lavatories of their local pub, Richie and Eddie return to their flat. After they unsuccessfully attempt to prepare breakfast, the mail arrives, containing a letter and parcel for Richie. The letter is from the solicitors, which Eddie has left to dispose of, and the parcel contains a blow-up doll Richie or without his flatmate's knowledge. He bribes Eddie to leave the flat so he can be alone with his new friend Monica, unaware that Eddie has opened the solicitor's letter and discovered that following his uncle's death, Richie is now owed £15,000, which he wishes to claim for himself. That's where they should end. <laughs> <clears throat> and here we go, let me just take another deep breath. The second act oh. opens with Richie having trouble with Monica. Ultimately, he accidentally attaches himself to the doll with superglue. Yeah, so this is a synopsis. This isn't the plot, yeah. Wikipedia. What are you doing? Eddie returns, intending to kill him to claim the £15,000. He helps remove the doll, then tries to poison Richie, albeit unsuccessfully. When Richie himself... So this is the last five minutes now they're talking about. When Richie himself reads the solicitor's letter, he discovers that the £15,000 is actually a debt Richie owes, as his uncle never paid it during his lifetime. He resigns himself to suicide, but not before Eddie has tricked him into, si- into signing a marriage certificate assuming that such a bomb would entitle him to the money. The play ends with Eddie realising his mistake and the pair apparently electrocute themselves to avoid paying the debt that they both now owe. Fucking hell. I thought hell. we said this was a short plot. Yeah, yeah. This is, uh, that's, that's not a plot. <laughs> that is a synopsis. That's horrific. It's not concise, is it? At all? It's essentially the plot is that the mail comes, the list of letter arrives, Eddie mistakenly reads that it's £15,000 owing, not owing but in debt yeah and then tries to kill richie i mean well, yes yeah. there's all the monica stuff but that yeah. is actually a subplot plot. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. the subplot that yeah. richie's trying to get his sure. end away with like the, the fact that, yeah they're both trying to get rid of the other one which I, that's a classic mm. fast type yeah. thing yeah. yeah some of the exits are a little bit forced aren't they oh it's absolutely a practical thing mm. for them to have a rest isn't it obviously there's yeah. one moment as well when uh, they're having a little bit of an argument 
breaking character and stuff where Rick actually walks across the stage and grabs a glass of water. Mm-hmm. He does, yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, they even say, well, it's a good job these towels were here and yeah. things. You know, they're yeah. breaking the fourth wall. People don't care, but... Yeah, yeah they, they've obviously written in, like, I want to have a little break here. Well, can yeah, you... and also just yeah. the plot. I think you've got to have Rick leave so that Aid can ring the solicitors and that it's, it's, it is part of the plot, but it's yeah. really like, oh, oh my, my, suddenly my things are on fire and I'm running out of the room. Yeah, and... Usually, Richie would hang around and moan about it rather than run out of the room, but yeah. There are sometimes some elements that you look at it and go, this feels a bit like British farce. Not mm. necessarily shitty, run for your wife kind of like. And I know a lot of those are like, whoops, there go my trousers. And I know some of this does involve with Richie walking around with, with, with just his trousers. Yeah. When, when Rick comes back in with yeah. his trousers off, obviously the audience love going mental for that. Yeah. And he really, really eggs it up, doesn't he? Like yeah. all his little like moves as he w- runs around the set. Yeah. I mean, like you even forgive when Rick first comes on at the beginning, you forgive the slightly cheesy round of applause just for an actor walking on because it's Rick and because it's bottom. There are a lot of cool bits of Rick and Aid both being the characters, but without having to say anything. It's through the sounds and through the, what the movements, you know? Be? What are these ones? Like, he endless. does his laugh, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. yeah, okay. When he's reading the Sunday Jugs and he's doing the... But, like, that's Eddie being Eddie, and then Richie next to him with the wonderful slow mm, lowering of, yeah. the, of the broadsheet newspaper oh, with the, love, the disapproving eyes. I love Richie's pronunciation of tabloid. This yeah. disdain <laughs> of it. Sunday yeah. Jugs. For some reason, Eddie, like, was desperate for a shit and then gets the newspaper and completely forgets and sits down for a little while before then he's he needs to well, he's been distracted by the jokes yeah. 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 I guess it, it does make sense <laughs> considering how keen Richie usually is to get hold of any kind of pornographic material he is quite willing to let Eddie have the Sunday jugs whilst he reads the uh, broadsheet Sunday papers isn't it's a he? bit of a role reversal as well where Eddie has a little flight of fancy talk mm. like flirting with the, the yeah. girl while Richie's being more serious yeah, yeah. but again yeah. it's Richie taking the stance of I'm going to read the very proper yeah. paper thank you very much I've got the Observer you've got the Sunday Jugs I'm better yeah. than you when Eddie leaves the room quickly <laughs> because they turn the page they've seen something incredibly hot on the paper <laughs> But he then reacts like he needs a shit. And we know that he needed a shit because he mm-hmm. was talking about needing a shit. I, for ages, thought, and I think some of the oh, audience thought as well. He was going to go for a wank. He was going for a wank, <laughs> yeah. But then when I rewatched it this time, I thought, no, he probably is going for a shit. Yeah. But then when he says, you're not going to want this newspaper after I finish with it, mm-hmm. again, I'd always taken it to be, you're going to yeah. jizz on it. But now I wonder if it's, well, we've got no toilet paper, on I'm going to wipe my ass on it. They say as much, they, I need the papers to right. right. To wipe, I, no toilet paper. I have watched that and thought the same thing but I do think they're going for the shit but I, yeah. I mean I don't know I haven't got the male anatomy but does sometimes like you know, it's all kind of hooked up and then if you no. get overexcited you might because he was holding in the shit and then suddenly no. like, oh Nick, shit no um, diarrhea does not induce erections no but the, the other way around if you get overexcited and you've been holding in I don't think you, so, <laughs> I don't think shit, so no, would it but... be like suddenly like oh fuck now I'm oh I'm coming I'm coming and now I can finally <laughs> Why not just that he's horny and then suddenly relax and then, oh, no, I can't uh, hold yeah. this any longer. I if you it's... try and hold on to a shit for more than like half an hour or so, <laughs> and then suddenly in. you're distracted from the holding on of that shit, I think, I don't right, know, right. that might be what would be the kickstart of, oh, no, can't, oh, can't hold on right, to this right, any longer. Right. I think that's what they're going for, but yeah, mm. I think you're absolutely right to have thought, is he going to jizz or is he going <laughs> to shit? <laughs> Keeping in the theme of the weird sound effects, there's some live ones played here. I don't know well, how live they are. But... All the sound effects are pretty good, aren't they? Yeah, the, uh, yeah. the letterbox sound weird as hell. I think, is that on purpose? Because yeah, it must be. So they hear it and they deliberately react slightly oddly as in, mm. what is that noise? Mm. You mm. know, so we hear it and then when he says that's the letterbox that's kind of the payoff because we're not sure what it is yeah sure. did you feel like obviously this was 1993 so before Roy Castle passed on did you feel like he was a bit of a like why is it like Roy fucking well, Castle with such venom from so, Rick on that had he done something I can't well, I don't know. I know I did wonder about this mainly because only the other day I found on YouTube on the Rick Mouse scrapbook YouTube page which I recommend you check it out it's got lots of good Rick Mouse stuff there was two clips on there that caught my interest one was Rick Mail winning Best Comedy Actor in the 1993 Comedy Awards, beating mm-hmm. a fuming Richard Wilson. <laughs> and also, there was a one from another year of Ed By picking up an award for Bottom, winning Best Comedy, mm-hmm. but Rick and Aid couldn't make it. And it, and the person who presented the award for the show was Roy Castle. Right. And I wondered if that might have been a sort of tenuous link to it. Maybe Roy mm-hmm. Castle offended Ed By. Maybe he said something about the show 
with it got back to Rick and Aid. I don't know. Because it does seem an unusual choice because when they have a go at Jonathan Ross or any of those yeah. other sort of like 90s presenting, yeah. like you think, yeah. oh yeah, fair enough. But with Roy Castle, it was just record breakers. And then obviously, I don't think, I don't know when he was diagnosed, but I he probably remember, wasn't yeah. ill at the time then. Mm. He, well, when in the clip I saw, he still had hair, so... Bit when Richie mistakenly thinks he's in trouble for some stuff at the pet shop. Is that the solicitor's letter or something? Uh, I, can't I think, yeah, remember. when the letter from Shotgun Bastard and Dribble oh, arrives. Such a fantastic it, name it of is, a law it? firm. Mm-hmm. What the fuck was going on there? Again, in the bottom universe, those solicitor's names is fantastic. But I also, I think, isn't it just a thing? Don't touch the solicitor's letter because as soon as it's been served then you're having to answer it. Because, I mean, there's definitely, that's been done in many a sitcom well, where it's like, avoid yeah, taking served, the envelope right. but, and then it's not been served and then you maybe. won't have well, to face the consequences. Well, technically it's already been so because they mm. it's been delivered into the property. No, yes. it hand... It, well, it was though because he was the postman, wasn't it? He, yeah. He was the fucking postman of a fight, so but, it was handed to him. Oh, uh, okay. But yeah. is it addressed to Richie? Yes. It's addressed to Richie, it is, isn't it? Yeah. But yeah. anyway, it's a... Very, very sort of well-known thing that you shouldn't yeah. take a solicitor's letter because then you've been served and then you'll have to yeah. answer the consequences. But what a great reveal of Rick's pet shop. Yeah, faux pas. <laughs> yeah, his so what? His penis inadvertently got stuck in the goldfish tank. What was he actually what, trying to do? He, he trying to fucking goldfish. Well, well, yeah, well, he was probably just getting his end well, away a little what, bit kinky. If you're that way inclined, get something like a, a bunny or a dog or so. What possible <laughs> way to get a goldfish? So like, you were saying, why isn't he buggering an? actual mammal why is he you're, putting yep, his yep. dick in the I fish think you, tank you would be killing the goldfish but you're, you're or he's got a small one no but i think he's just letting them rub up against his penis isn't he but you're asking this like it's difficult <laughs> to imagine but we literally see him act this out in series three yeah, where he do. grabs mm. a goldfish bowl and starts fucking it i think it's just the goldfish bowl though is uh, uh, okay, okay. anything in it yeah. that's to put out the flames that is it's, right it's, yeah it but is. then he gets enjoyment from it yeah. yeah if you were in the writing room with rick and aid at that point i mean it'd probably just be a bit grim wouldn't it to say i inadvertently stuck my dick in the hamster <laughs> or in the rabbit whereas okay. the fish tank isn't right, quite right. as horrific an image is it because it is just him putting his dick in some water and some fishes fish. it's not actual oh. rape of an animal oh no are you sure it's not that he's got like a, a huge carp or something and got its mouth around the end or it something says like goldfish. that he says Go, goldfish oh, tank. Okay. See, I've sure. never imagined that his penis is in any way entering one uh, of the fish. This is such a ridiculous conversation. Is, but is, let's have let's it, because that's what is, we're doing. Is the, but the, I think it's that he's enjoying the sensation of the fish. Right. It's a swimming around. Uh, around, okay. rather than... First terrible pun of the show, which thankfully there's not too many... I still groan, privet investigator. Oh, I, found that I funny. think that's no, great. I think that's a terrible pun. It's come on, come but on. But it's a lovely little I'm, bit of stand up. It's a bit it. silly. It's, I mean, no, no, it's 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 cute and funny in the yeah. way that like a Christmas cracker joke is, you know. But it couldn't stand alone. But in the context of that conversation, yeah. it's a bit of light. He human. hired a private investigator to find out how many people he'd slept with. You know how many people he'd slept with. <laughs> Zero. Exactly. It, for that devastatingly accurate report. Yeah, it's a and bit of a tag line, isn't it? Because then he says, I really must get that typewriter fixed. Yes. So, yeah. it, again, it, it is all just a little bit of Richie's sort of silliness, isn't it? But I, I quite like that gag. Yes. Yes. I like a pun. But they break into a bit of a fight after this with involving kicking in the bollocks and then Rick getting Eddie's uh, bollocks in pliers. I'm quite pleased with the use of props in this. Yeah. Cricket bat, pliers, mm. the fighting they do. When you consider they can't stop and reposition mm. for a camera and that mm-hmm. kind of thing, the way they're able to do things like pliers on bollocks with the good sound effects as well, mm. like it all works very well, you know? They've yeah. thought through every single gesture, every yeah. single move, and they've obviously rehearsed it and rehearsed it. And yeah. to quote the guy at the top of the video, I mean, there is nothing like that physical comedy. <laughs> I'll, I'll just put that hey, it's just absolutely <laughs> excellent. But uh. it... They really get to show it off, don't they? I wonder they? where that guy is now. If you if you are that guy, <laughs> then he's in my any of the people at the beginning of the video, yeah, if we're just that, jealous. If you're that woman with the lisp, but then please get in contact. <laughs> so, so I hope he's not too rude. This is not what young people want. And then cuts off mid sentence. <laughs> they're like, well, you're you're wrong. But we'll put you on the video still. Yeah. <laughs> Ethel Cardew gets a reference. Yeah. Mm. No reference to her being uh, Richie's ex, though. Just the oh look, there's Ethel Cardew, mm. Eddie. Go and get your knob out. Yeah, yeah. The, there's a few uh, callbacks of names, aren't yeah. there? There's oh, and Sue Carpenter gets a mention as well. Well, when Eddie comes back in with all the mail and stuff, and Eddie's yeah. saying, "Oh, it's the fucking postman," <laughs> and stuff, it's like, "Oh, what proof Didn't did know he you have?" Were fucking him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, what proof did it, did he have? Any proof? It's like, "Oh yeah, a parcel and some letters, blah blah." blah. <laughs> then uh, about five minutes later, when Eddie changes the subjects, 
It's like, oh, that's an interesting package. It's like, oh, he didn't tell me we had a parcel. Yes, he fucking did. <laughs> yeah. He did tell me. It was you. literally in the script <laughs> yes. five minutes ago. <laughs> so let's go back a little bit when Eddie is reading the solicitor's letter. Yeah. When he reads that it's addressed to Richie and he starts laughing, ah, good, it's not me. Then it's like, oh, it's £15,000. He immediately said, this is it, Eddie, this is the big one. Like, no, it's not for you. <laughs> so he's instantly thinking one step ahead, well, how do I get this off him? There must be a way I can steal this yeah. from my best friend. Yeah. Fucking horrific. Like, for, very, for, not like, oh, great new, I better suck up to him. He's like, no, this is all mine. Yeah, but, immediately the yeah. plan is set. Yeah. Also, again, it's, it's an amount of money that's not life-changing but to them it is yeah it is the 90s mm. he could get pissed out of his head on two pounds <laughs> yeah yeah but it's just so pervy when you watch it back now i don't know if it's just me watching it in the sort well, of light of post 90s yeah, feminism mean... but like just talking about their knockers hanging out <laughs> and how much like they're actually just ogling the women like i i think in the tv show it's never like struck yeah. me as as Dirty and filthy well, as I mean, when they do in the live the, show. I mean, there's an obvious comparison. Like he, Richie is literally treating a woman as an mm. object. Yeah. Well, an object as a woman? No. Which one am I talking about? An object as a woman. Yeah. yeah she's, she's an object. Quite as a woman. literally, an object yeah. of Makes a woman. Makes the joke. There's not enough women in comedy. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this this is a pre. Which is funny. This is this is a pre-internet, pre-porn readily available mm. world. So uh-huh. it's a world where they have to go to the news agent to get stuff off the top mm. shelf if they want to see naked yeah, where women. Where would he have ordered this from? I guess off of a, a Paul Mag or some I guess back maybe, yeah. Yeah. Be another one of his sort of like I've you know, always back found of the newspaper kind the, of things. I've always found the expression on sex doll that was fucking funny. That sort of <laughs> startles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when did you, what were you talking about? It was aid being perverted. So it's, a, it, it does it several times so there's obviously the, it's a funny little bit with the newspaper and the Sunday jokes That's it. Yeah, and yeah. then again with the idea of the knockers hanging yeah, out on the beach right. for the Bahama competition. Yeah. Well, it's interesting you mentioned perversion there because there was a look that Rick pulls in this which is his three looks of innocence behind mm. Eddie when he's trying to act all sort of what me? I don't know what's going on but then the look of perversion he pulls mm-hmm. when he's finally got the box. I I love it, that though when he says it's a medical nature. supply. Yeah. That, yeah. I, I've, I've not seen Richie that perverted since Lady <laughs> Natasha was about to knock on the door, you know? Mm. That, yeah. that was peak pervy Richie. The amount of effort he put into his pseudonym, Richard <laughs> Mugridge. <laughs> As a no Scottish one, relative. No one would ever, ever figure this out. How suspicious is Eddie's phone call to the lawyers? <laughs> Excuse me. Just want to know what the next of kin is. Yeah. How do you do that? And but also, what would happen if he should stop living? Love, okay, yeah, sure. Love how obvious all of that is, but it's just so joyful, especially and also just simple, just sort of like and good bastard. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's, that's a lovely little there's line. A, there's a dated joke there that people may not get. You know, J. R. Hartley yeah. mm. says his name. That was a Yellow Pages advert for as an author. Yeah. In 93, how far away from the Yellow Pages adverts were we? Had they were they still going? Or had they, were they very much an eighties thing? Because yeah, I, I remember three. I think I think, I think the they were on I in remember the nineties. I remember them being right. Like, Did you know that book is available? It's real, real. isn't it? It's, it's an actual thing. book. Yeah. It's basically um, it's it's a pseudonym. I've gone on Amazon looking for it. I bet it's expensive because there's not many. About, right. It's about fifteen quid or something. It's not. It's not yeah. that. It's not. If it was a quid or something, I'd buy it. Yeah. But yeah. No. It's it's a collection of fishing themed <laughs> anecdotes and stories by Michael Russell. Right. Cheekily using the pseudonym of the much loved character J.R. Hartley. Wouldn't say he's a much loved character. Right. Really. Yeah. Has he got. He might have had two adverts. It might yeah. have been a second one. I, I wouldn't really call him a character. Right. Considering that gag where he says, My name, J.R. Hartley, it's a fairly sort of gentle gag. Mm-hmm. It gets a bit of a laugh. I feel that the follow up, Delight to send a signed pic, dot, 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 and a test tube of my love juice <laughs> should get a bigger laugh than yeah, it gets. That's I think brilliant. it just gets buried in, right, in yeah. the J.R. Hartley moment. Like, stuff. how mm. wonderfully horrifying is that? I'm going to send you a test tube of my so semen. That guy, it's like, oh, you're, you're that J.R. Hartley, wow. Can, you, can send, you please do my two... Can you please send me some spunk, please? please. And a signed picture. As well as, oh, fucking weird. Uh, Gustio Wimflap. Um, mm, yeah. One of their other many friends with weird names that do weird things. That's um, so. It's a story point of uh, that Richie needs the pump that mm. is yeah, yeah, there. Yeah. It's fixed there, and it can't be moved from there. They even yeah. spell it out as much. Why the fuck would someone go to someone's house to set up? Uh, yeah. That's a, what doesn't ridiculous. really fly, does it? But I think it's it's isn't it that he's going to be practicing his human cabaret act. 
So you've got to maybe think that like Richie and Eddie are the only ones who've got a flat and yeah, and they've lost yeah. a bet or you know. Yeah. There'll be any number of reasons why Gustio Winflap is owed yeah. the space in their flat. Yeah. But to it, practice. It is it is it's a great bottom universe name, <sighs> Gustio Winflap. But the whole all, story that they paint yeah. about Gusty. Yeah. Gusty, 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 but Gusty. All, all, also man. also the whole story uh, that they tell about him is the opportunity to get the first use of the word cunt in there. Mm. In a in a way which the audience, again, doesn't react to it in the way you would think. This mm-hmm. is the first time we've heard the, the show Bottom say the word cunt. And, it, uh, and in quite a good line, it gives, gives a fuck about him, the cunt's dead anyway. Yeah. It's quite good. Again, kind of gets a bit lost, a bit... I don't know if it's buried. I think it's almost because he does throw it away, though, doesn't he? It's just yeah. literally, you know, uh, who cares about him? Before Eddie leaves, he asks Richie what that smell is. And Richie says, eau de toilette. He's put on some kind of, like, uh, aftershave or perfume, which stinks. But sort of mm-hmm. wafts out his knob, which always <laughs> made me think, did you put... The other toilet on your cock. Yeah, Richie's, I think, put that down I there as the ready for Monica. Right. That would sting, wouldn't it? I would have thought so. Yeah. Well, I presume maybe he's put it on his undies. Right. Mm. Yeah. Rather than the knob itself. <laughs> so Eddie gets sent off because Richie lies he's got a girl coming round, a real girl. He even says, mm-hmm. yes, a real girl. And it's not a yeah. girl. Again, do you yeah. think he believes it or is he actually just. I, telling Eddie that I think he's in his own world he puts a personality he sees onto Monica yeah. as a bird coming to, round yeah. to him Monica mm. is a real bird with yeah. great big wobbly knuckles what a horrible line <laughs> that's just thrown away as well like, of course she's not going to have an orgasm she's a girl <laughs> <laughs> that's such wonderful yeah. ignorance isn't it it is sadly true though probably to <laughs> some, some, what? some he, he ladies say, out there he also does use back in a mo a sex mo sex mo was that again that's not the first instance is it that's, a, that's from um, Digger. Digger yeah have we heard Eddie's middle name before this Elizabeth, Elizabeth. Elizabeth Hitler before yes. this um, I think or so. is this you the are first fucking genius I knew you'd find Ed- it yeah yeah because he says Edward mm-hmm. Elizabeth Hitler but had any of the episodes in series one or two revealed Eddie's middle name not 100% sure actually I want to say yes but I can't think maybe not yeah Does, maybe not well he gets the check made out to just Eddie Hitler, doesn't he? Mm. Yeah, it's become such a sort of ingrained. Everyone knows that yeah. his middle name's Elizabeth. But he, but so Ed, so Richie does address him as that Edward Elizabeth Hitler. But that's mm. when I hear Edward Elizabeth Hitler, I hear that bit, yeah. this yeah. delivery from yeah. the live one, as you say. Yeah. It's weird that there's a whole bottomisms that come yeah. from this. So Eddie comes back, and when he does. There is one of those elements, I think, of slightly British farce, which is he comes back and Richie doesn't know where to shove the doll, so shoves it down his pants, leaving the leg yeah. hanging out. And then it's that thing of, oh, I must hide this. So that yeah. it happens well, I had here. To not noticed. Yeah, yeah, it happens here with the leg, and then obviously later on, once Monica's glued onto his knob, he mm-hmm. hides around, you know, the entire oh, inflated I, thing I, underneath I, the yeah. curtain. Apparently, there's some lost footage as well of. Rick sitting on the sofa and the leg popping out. Oh right, yeah, I read that on Wikipedia. Yeah, but where is it? Sure. This footage is now lost. lost. Footage. Like, how's that happened? Like, it, either it was included on the video or wasn't, and it wasn't included on the video. So I can only assume that that's what it means. Right, somebody mm. must have seen it live. Yeah, and that would have yeah. happened. Yeah. but it's not there in the video. So yeah. either they didn't do it at the Mayflower Theatre or they cut it for time. Yeah. So when Eddie's leaving and coming back all the time because he's getting mugged by himself, <laughs> yeah. that's what he's saying now. So what, silly. Right, what do you think is happening there? Is Eddie actually using it as an excuse or is he actually going out, hitting himself I, and thinking... I, I think it's that farce element of just the ludicrously building, but I do think Eddie is beating himself up yeah. for the emergency fiver. He's that stupid. I, yeah. think he, I think he's gone downstairs, he's caught sight of his own reflection yeah. in, in a window, <laughs> run at it, Thought he's been he- woken up a moment later and gone, oh. oh. Like a dog. Because they <laughs> yeah. are sleep deprived, don't forget. They've had the lock-in, haven't they? Yeah, right. not we're quite talk- sure. We're not spoken about that. They how drunk say, Eddie is. Yeah, well, but... they do mention, oh, it was a wild night. Oh, yeah, oh, mm. I'm feeling a bit delicate from being in the toilets. Yeah. Where there are no drinks <laughs> yeah. available. But, but then at the top of the show, there's Eddie's like, where are my glasses? And then the obvious gin and scotch yeah. gag. Yeah. So he's down them at the, in, for breakfast. Okay. Yeah. And, and, and the and beer. beer. But right, yeah, how yeah. drunk is he still from the night before and did they get any sleep? Okay, so we're right by the interval now when uh, the love doll gets inflated and then he... What is meant to happen is the doll burst and then he has to repair it. But it just kind of flies off and he scrambles to behind it. Is that what the bollocks is? Oh, yeah. right. It's, it's, pop- it's, it's mm. fucking... Du- it's done so badly. Mm. Right, it's okay. Basic, because that's why then she's patched she's up. She's covered in all that mm-hmm. tape and stuff. Yeah. Right, okay. But it's what's manner have happened is she was overinflated and burst. But yeah. They, I don't know. They Probably they hard to make a blow-up doll do I that. I think they could have just put 
what a sound of a bursting thing with a blackout or something yeah. is there a sound of a bursting though then no it's a the deflating it's, it's deflating noise right okay mm. oh, okay yeah that never really came across yeah, that well it's not done well at yeah. all at the interval I think it's a good time for a word from our sponsor One bowlful of Kellogg's Special K has half the amount you need each day of these eight vitamins and iron. No wonder we call it special. Kellogg's Special K. Stay special. When the show comes back from the interval, I did think this feels like a very stage show progression. By that I mean, mean, usually when you're watching a stage play, you have an intermission, you come back, there's been a passage of time from what's happened before, mm. and the characters have progressed slightly, and they usually represent this through a costume change. So not only does Monica look a bit different, but Richie comes on wearing smoking a robe. jacket. Yeah. <laughs> not well, a it's desk. a robe, isn't it? But I've always thought it's like a smoking yeah. jacket. Yeah, but is. now he gets rid of it very quickly, but I wonder if the reason he comes on wearing it is to help the audience feel like time has progressed, mm. you know? Possibly, yeah, possibly. Also, was anyone else's eyes drawn to the pubes on Monica? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because you yeah. see the masking tape. The yeah. pubes are weird on that doll. It's a very, it's a very <laughs> visible, a visible bush, but a shaved bush. Mm-hmm. You know, it's sort like a trimmed. Bush. Yeah, neat, neat and tidy and plastic. Yeah, I have never seen a blow up doll, but is that not a standard thing? Oh no, I'm not trying fall- to catch you oh, guys no. out here. Oh, no. I'm not falling for that again. Uh, I mean, ever. Richie's then has a flight of fancy of this date that he's mm. having, where so yeah. in his world he has a girl round who's naked on the sofa, <laughs> apart from a bra, just yeah. just a bra. That's odd. And then the, let's have a dance. <laughs> yeah. Let's dance around the <laughs> fucking the flat. Do you find it? strangely charming how it, Richie is building up still even though he's with a blow up doll oh, he's, he's trying sweet. to court her he's, uh, he's, I guess so he's very nervous and he's mm. very sweet with her mm. but the level to which he seems to believe that she is a real person he could almost be like fucking Buffalo Bill or something couldn't yeah. he this is psychopath behaviour yes but he is very sweet and loving and almost oh, tender with her I find really odd it's where it's like so let's go behind the sofa even though there's no one around so yeah, what are you no, going no. hiding from and then he's uh, 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 and then, then puppets her to do it who's that for in your world there's no one watching you you know That's the, and then Eddie comes back again he's oh shit he's well done the, the hand cream thing you don't see that coming at all Did not, no clue it's well a, why would you why no, would no. he have put super glue in the hand cream yeah. and then yeah. even just the coming in and saying oh the door's off its hinges yeah. Yeah. so why yeah. he's asking about the super Glue. it's all yeah. very succinctly dropped in isn't it the super glue in the hand cream jar is well set up it's brilliantly paid off <laughs> and, it, and, and it's deservedly given a great yeah. you know mm. laugh for it as well also when Richie's trying to get rid of Eddie when he's in this situation his first idea is um, thought about it and we're not compatible with flatmates <laughs> yeah. go away forever <laughs> yeah yeah I'd rather burn the relationship to the ground <laughs> yeah. and never see you again than suffer the embarrassment and indignity of being yeah. seen to have a blow up doll on my cock yeah. what's odd and fun and nice about Richie and Eddie's relationship relationship is that although it should be mortifyingly embarrassing for Richie to actually admit okay it's not a trumpet it's, it's a, a blow up doll it's... Eddie immediately doesn't actually take the piss out of him and start to he actually does just try and help yeah, doesn't he yeah. try and like help me out of this I and Eddie immediately so. will be like oh god did, it's this again did you get the three working offices gag no I didn't as a kid yeah uh, the orifice yes. right so I, no. had to, so I had to get my older brother to explain it to me <laughs> who, who then explained no it he manually meant, it's orifices oh. yeah yeah <laughs> he then got his blow up doll out yeah <laughs> it's a common thing that we do when we say oh we didn't go and get this as a kid that's bad mm. Isn't it like it's not for kids? Yeah. <laughs> We're not meant to get this yet. We should, weren't meant to be watching. Which added to the feeling of naughtiness and yeah. excitement watching this. This well, was the it's tape. why it's an eighteen. Yeah, isn't yeah. It? yeah. But it's an eighteen. But this was the video that got watched probably more than anything else in my house growing up. You know, through the nineties. More than the porn. But so you say, Eddie's helping Richie out. Is he just over the moon to be able to hack at him with he chisels and swords? He does seem to really, and... really love getting all the tools out, doesn't he? And yeah. having a good go. The drill bit. It's not the most horrific of the tools. It's probably the least uh, painful of mm. the ch- chisel and the saw. Yeah, uh, the, the, but his face, Richie's face, it's, the drill is brilliant. Yeah, it's yeah. one of his best. He makes ones it, ever it work, does. doesn't he? It's absolute agony. But that whole sequence put me in mind of something that was later repeated in series three, which is the thong sequence yeah. where Eddie uses mm. the sort of the welding torch yeah. and a hammer to essentially punch into Richie's ass. That joke's actually ripped off in Bottom Life. 
ball. Right. Yes, the, it is. They have yeah. the, the elastic thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's weird, isn't it? It's like, are they ripping themselves off yeah. or are they just reusing material? Which I a lot that... of comedians and acts do. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, you know, some stand-ups will go on doing the same act for years. So it's just because it's been committed yeah. to film and then they want to go with it again. Yeah. And, if you do it too much, it would be really frustrating. But I think for me, it just feels almost like they're just calling back. How good is the payoff to after that lengthy sequence of drilling and sawing yeah. to the line, you've just cut off my knob? Yeah. yeah. But that's the most yeah. obvious thing. Because like, you <laughs> you're saw, thinking yeah. it. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and she hasn't exploded. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's the fact that it's preceded by a very calm, there's just one thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, what did, so what is the logic there then? How did he get it detached with a saw? I suppose well, it was I, a coat on some pubes. I, or I something? suppose if there was some sort of uh, solidified dried glue, maybe he sawed through the, that. Then when he runs. It's another excuse for him to go and have a little rest. Yeah, he runs off screaming, and then Eddie makes a, another phone call where he makes a mistake. He calls the amount ten grand instead of fifteen grand. Oh, does he? Anyone notice that? Oh, okay, Ooh, I can't say I did. Yeah, rubbish. Ruin the whole fucking show. <laughs> oh, why did they bother Oof. putting it out? I love goat poison. <laughs> goat poison. <laughs> That, that's another one of the many examples where they've just obviously thought of all the combinations of words. Mm. Rat poison, no, yeah. mouse, no, mm-hmm. thing, what other things can we get? Bug sprays, everything. Goat. What would be stupid? Goat. Who, what? Why would they have a goat infestation yeah. in Hammersmith? Where, yeah. <laughs> who would ever need goat poison for anything ever? When yeah. would, where would goats be a pest? Definitely not in London. No, and when Richie finds out that his knob is still there or something, and then yeah. he looks at yeah. it, and how then, has he not realised? Yeah, it? he could feel it. Wouldn't he be mm. able to feel the? Part? I don't know. But then when Eddie sees it, he gives a little wave, and then, <laughs> and then he makes Monica do a little wave. Richie doesn't see any of this as well. Yeah, so that's, yeah. that's sweet and weird, isn't it? That Eddie's puppeteering him for. He's just playing along with a game. What, which, would you say that the? The poison and the callback to the making the tea for the burglar kind of foolproof plan that Eddie's trying to pull off to kill Richie. Yeah, it does feel like a bit like that, doesn't it? Do you think the when they go into a sort of wonderful overacting, slime in this ear, mm. yearn for change, that then Rick deliberately reacts to pretending he's annoyed, do you think that was all in the script? Or do you think that was improvised at the time? You know, with the whole, do you want to give me the feed line again in front of all your friends? But uh, that's not why your arm's getting tired. It's, yeah. You know, all that stuff. I don't know. What, I think some of them are real right i i think this the arm tired and then the wrist that looks like a genuine crack up by rick's Rick. yeah. reaction to the wrist bit seems genuine doesn't it when i watch it i think oh that's such a genuine reaction mm. but then rick is such a good actor that mm. he could sell you that every yeah. t- he could true. tell you that every night yeah you know? it's true i do think that the over egging must have been something they've been doing on the tour mm previously and the don't you ever yearn for change is yeah. again become such a bottom line that's hasn't it? done in this episode as well wasn't it i think it's in bottom life too so, as well yeah. isn't it or maybe it, it, it it's sort of a call back again of like just that sort of delivering the line in that yeah. way and yeah. rick rick does it but more so in bottom life too it's it's nice to for a to get a chance to be the showman on stage in front mm. of rick there you know it's yeah. a nice kind of role reversal. Yeah, and that's why the audience goes so crazy. Yeah. I don't know. So when you hear Rick saying, this is very unprofessional, they're making a fucking video, yeah. mm. that feels genuine. I'd like to believe that the first fuck-ups in the first bottom live are mostly real, and then they mm. just realise, right, what works in yeah. the yeah. first one? Let's put some of them in. Let's write some in. They mm. feel more genuine, but then maybe, as you say, they've just really sold it well. Yeah. And then once you're used to the format, yeah. When you're watching the lives subsequently, you're waiting for those fuck up moments, aren't you? Mm. Introduction of another off stage character in the bottom universe who's used to propel the plot forward by giving them the documents they need. Dodgy Ken the lawyer. Mm. Yet another Ken. So we've mm-hmm. had Mad Ken Stalin, mm-hmm. Sad Ken, mm-hmm. and now Dodgy Ken the lawyer. Yeah. Who's broken out of prison, it yeah. seems, to then give him some, uh, <laughs> some paperwork. We're on the subject of uh, lawyers and stuff then. Can I ask what? genuinely is the legality to passing on a debt to someone is that is that a real uh, thing I it doesn't think it, it, it can happen yeah. yeah your next of kin will Inherited take on debt. your debt like, really? what the fucking hell you want about I'm yeah be careful really yeah no way yeah and it's the thing if that's, like that's what, that's what limited we, companies are from for. a fucking <laughs> from a, a relative that you never heard of and we've just died. Yeah. You know, oh, quite a lot of money. Oh. And it has to be paid today. Some, Otherwise, we'll murder you. Someone. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't know writing, about that. <laughs> in writing a threat from a lawyer. The so, legality of that is probably questionable. So, someone should do a remake of Brewster's Millions, but it should be flipped. So you've got to earn a million dollars a day for the next 30 days. Or, or, <laughs> or you'll be killed dead. or something. Yeah. A million a day? Yeah. <laughs> wow. 
Yeah, I, I, as far as I'm aware, I think if there's debts hanging over a spouse in particular, okay. like, he manages to get Richie to sign the document, which Richie signs with a flourish, and then throws the pen, <laughs> says, "I've put my shoulder out," yeah. which you think is a joke, but when he goes, "I've got to stop being sexy," you can hear his shoulder clicking. It, his oh, really? microphone picks it up. Watch it again. You can okay. hear, and, I, and it made me think, "Oh, has he actually put his shoulder maybe, out?" Maybe. Yeah, I swear to God, he goes, he does the the movement of it, and you can hear click, click, click as he's wow. doing it. Now, obviously, the marriage under false pretenses isn't legal. Obviously, right. But uh, one thing I didn't even think of, back in the 90s, gay marriage isn't even legal. Oh, yeah. And so there's yeah. no way that that would have feasible. Like that. And that's why he suddenly starts calling him the girl suddenly, well, because it couldn't, he couldn't be married to it, him if he was a... The wife. Is, yeah. there's, and, I mean, there's loads of gags around domestic violence again, aren't there? Yeah. Like wife battery. But interesting, the moment they both think they're married, they feel they have to take on the actual persona of the married couple. Yeah. But Eddie role reversal, Eddie's the wife in this scenario. Yeah. It, it, rather than Richie, usually it's Richie is the sort of fairly bisexual one. He's the he, he's always the wife of the relationship well, doing the cooking. I guess Eddie's taken on Richie's name, so mm. therefore he'd okay. be the woman. Yeah, right. Edward Eddie Richard. Yeah, as Richie is essentially possessed by the, by the ghost of marriage, <laughs> taking control of his hands towards Eddie's cupped non breast. <laughs> well, that's what happens the moment you get married. <laughs> I know. I learnt the hard well, way. Bit, and then there's a bit where I think is genuine where he manages to get the line out and then Eddie's like, fucking hell. Oh, yeah. The line from the play. But you yeah. see, Richie looks shocked. Yeah. So like, that's not like, the line. Yeah, the next line yeah. isn't fucking hell. Yeah. So where are you going with this? Yeah. You see him surprised and then he, yeah, he calls it again, <laughs> breaks down. That seems very genuine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's aid making Rick I laugh. do think they must play up to it a bit more when they're filming it. They must. Yeah. yeah. I think they would have written in, this is the bit where we can play. Mm-hmm. Won't they? The, yeah, like it's coming yeah. towards the end of the act two, and it's like, right, we can have a bit of fun at this point. But the those classic lines of "they're going to be closed," you know, and all that about the pub, yeah. like they they're all. Oh, I scripted, thought that meant I when say. he said they're going to be closed. I thought that meant the the theatre's going to oh, shut that's and close out. Yeah, yeah, I, I always thought, thought it means the pubs afterwards. Oh no, I always thought they meant like they'll close this place and turn the lights off. You know. Oh no, I think yeah. it's that they want to go for a drink afterwards and the pubs uh, will be shut. Okay. Maybe another one of the many traditions of the bottom line things. Can you guess what I'm going to say? Go on. Have a wank. Oh uh, right, yeah. yeah. Where did this come from? Was it a genuine call out by an audience member one time and then they got? I th- I think the way yeah. they've written it. If if you've got Richie mm. on stage saying. What should I do with my mm. last few moments? They know that someone in the audience is going to yell out, have a wank. Yeah. That's a very good... Ch- it's planted, isn't yeah. it? But, but it's not like you do that in Shakespeare or <laughs> <laughs> any other theatrical plays. As soon as a character to says, be or a not to, what to be or not to be, have a wank! <laughs> yeah. The whole bollock kicking sequence, great mm. physicality, great energy from them. You've got to give it to Rick for the fact he throws his arms out every single time. Made me think of the chess fight that ends with his head in the fridge mm-hmm. because he does that same thing there. Every time the fridge slams shut, yeah. throws his yeah, arms out. You know? And they get sort of physically less and less, accurate, less though, wouldn't they? Yeah. yeah. He's going limp, basically. <laughs> Dying. <laughs> well, at, at one point in the whole bollock kicking sequence, mm. which is obviously played out so long that they, that they then just start cutting to the audience to get their reactions as well, is at one point, one of the camera shots they cut to is above where you can see that Aid's foot is quite clear going oh, yeah. over the crotch not that it ruins it because it's been a brilliant sequence <laughs> but when it's being filmed you can't yeah, avoid yeah, that sure. can you the camera angles but from where the audience are yeah, yeah. that is so well staged oh, also did you notice I, I'm pretty sure the words blah 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 are literally written on that letter oh right okay. it looks like right. there's some recurring words on there okay. so I would assume yeah because he natural. reads them out exactly yeah. Yeah. exactly the same yeah, as yeah, yeah, Aid yeah, yeah. does earlier doesn't he so, so yeah, it's a it's callback feed mm. so, did you think Richie's moment of trying to reach out to Eddie and tell him about how much his friendship meant to him was a bit touching? Very sweet. And and then Eddie wonderfully shits on yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, undercuts it. It's brilliant. Yeah. 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 Rick Mail, when he's playing Richie, I think I've seen it with Richie before, when he's playing him as sort of nervous and being sincere, he'll do this thing where he goes, I'm, oh, this is stupid. You know, he'll sort of look down and go, this is silly or something like that. Mm. And that's a kind of nice little touch that Rick Mayall always did, you know? It's a very right. human touch, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So he's, he's prayed to God a few times as well. Yeah. <laughs> and love oh. his monologue to Lordy Lordy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh God, my fucking knees. That's yeah. phenomenal. I yeah. didn't see that coming at all. Brilliant, yeah. brilliant, <laughs> uh, Mr. X. <laughs> and How again, the, similar to Apocalypse where he sort of talks himself into, yeah. well, it doesn't matter where I go. Yeah. Appropriate ending, I think, then both dying. I mean, uh, That's I, a really usual bottom thing. Um, I yeah. say the, the 
design of the to- the electric toilet, it's used so fleetingly. It, yeah. But it's almost it's wasted, isn't it? Pro- yeah, like the wall's been cut off and mm. <laughs> out. it's all like all of that stuff that's dripping over the top of it. I like the uh, the hidden uh, electric gubbins in the the cupboard that hadn't been opened yet, and it's yeah. sort of all, all obviously there from the beginning. Aid yeah. gives it that kind yeah. of nod and wink, the acknowledgement to the audience. Where in the story did he put that in? Because <laughs> yeah. He didn't, he, yeah, it doesn't make any sense. That's something that isn't there in yeah. the TV yeah. version of the flat, is it? Yeah, no. When Eddie starts counting down. F- uh, well, counting up to five, and mm. he's then to four, eleven, twelve. Like, you know, fuck me, I wish I couldn't count. You hear some of the audience members getting in. Five, yeah, five, yeah, yeah. five yeah. Oh, fucking kill him. Bless him, he doesn't know how to count <laughs> properly. I better help him. Oh, idiots. And I will say, the ending comes out of nowhere. Like, the delivery, bit, yeah. the the pacing and their energy. After the build. Nines before it. Just mm. like yeah, one or two just, lines, they oh, just all calm. Da, 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 da. Oh, but, uh, what's the time? Yeah. Oh, we better kill it, kill ourselves now. And then, if it was a TV show, that would be the freeze frame moment, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would be them of both. Them with the electricity filter effect on. Yeah. Them. Now, something that I never noticed until watching it this time: uh, the end credits. Do you? Yeah, there's lots some, of little jokes in there, yeah, isn't there? In the there's credits, there's some funny uh, titles. I wrote down some of the like, good ones, like like cigarettes provided by or something yeah, like well, that. So there's a stage manager slash doll inflator, right? A special effects slash cider, yeah. Uh, sound engineer slash decisions. Don't know what the fuck that means. Uh, not a lot slash very little is uh, Danny Huckle's piece. I don't know what the fuck he did. Very little, yeah. it seems. <laughs> Uh, and truck driver slash running around for Pete, number one. Oh. Yeah, there's like some nice fun little credits. They reward the audience with several sort of curtain calls coming back mm. on, waving to everyone. And then that final reveal yeah. of a huge note saying, mm. that's it, fuck off. Yeah. It's such a great way for them to end it. Yeah. We're not it, coming out again. No mm. freeze frame to do, but yeah. we're in place of a freeze frame. Yeah. Yeah. It is a freeze frame, actually. I didn't notice until this time as mm. well. The audience stopped moving there. It's a freeze frame, but you still hear the audio. On the video, right. yeah, yeah, video. yeah, yeah, yeah. But for some reason, they well, maybe it's a thing of, like, we need to end on a freeze frame. Yeah. Don't think anyone will notice. Now we need yeah. to. Someone might be doing a podcast about this <laughs> 30 years later. In terms of the performance that ended up being recorded for that video... I think the standing ovation they got at the end was very well deserved. I don't think they were on their feet quick enough. Yeah. It's one of my only off. criticisms. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, they should have been on their feet much quicker, that audience. I, yeah. It's one of my bugbears when people just still <laughs> sit there thinking, oh, I'm OK, so I'll drag myself thing, about yeah. their seat. When you see, like, two-thirds of the audience are up, oh, I guess yeah. so. Yeah, after yeah. being yeah. Inter- entertained yeah. by two of the greatest comedians you're ever likely yeah. to see, get up off your bookings. An incredibly well-written, brilliantly mm. acted, fast-paced performance of yeah. a great comedy show that was about 100 minutes long. That was some great entertainment. Having watched them live versus watching the scripted televisual yeah. performances, which are also superb, it's extra special and there's a bit of yeah. magic in the air that translates on the video. Yeah. And actually, sometimes you watch back live recordings of different shows and, and it mm. doesn't translate that same way. But when you watch Bottom Live... I actually do feel like I was there, even though I yeah. clearly wasn't. Still, to this day, feels a very niche show, Bottom, but mm. you see how fucking ram mm. that theatre is. Yeah. 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 And it had only come... Trouble it had only been out. on the telly for a couple of years, you know, two series in at that point. So for you guys, any particular moments that were a stand-up moments for you? I think Rick's monologue and stand-up little bit about the the lingerie models and the French yeah. and the baguette and the hind quarters that's all so well written and performed yeah. by Rick he relishes doing that yeah. I guess for me it's probably when Eddie actually hits him on the nose right. yeah. <laughs> I freeze framed that as a kid I had a video player that had like fast forward and, and rewind at different speeds and stuff so you could <laughs> go frame by frame right, and it right. is a problem like... and do you what do you like more about that the fact that he has hit him or then the really sweet are you alright that yeah. Aid actually does break not, character to us. Aid doesn't do it straight away. Yeah. Well. They try it because yeah. I, th- I think uh, Rick cuts the fight short there a little bit because he does say, oh, can you, <laughs> like, we'll get too old for this. And, he, and it obviously it has happened just after that hit. So oh, do you think you know, they cut it short? I've never well, thought that. I've just... Oh, because he says, maybe, stop, because... I'm completely fucked, doesn't <laughs> he? Yeah. He does, it's, it's definitely that bit where he hits him and then mm-hmm. he says it right after, yeah. pack it in, we're getting too old for this yeah. and stuff. So the fight may have gone on a bit longer, I guess. This is com- complete conjecture yeah. on my part. But... but when you watch the first Bottom Live, they're so young yeah. and so in their prime that ha- when they get to the further down the line Bottom Lives, it really just show actually, wow, how much that must have taken it out of yeah. them even more so as they go through it. 
Um, any particular niggles for you guys? I suppose if you've been really niggly now that time's gone on, the Graham Taylor reference. Right. And there's a few other references like from May to December. But that's a very minor niggle because I can't complain about them doing topical gags. Yeah. So. Matt, how about you? Any niggles? So those cunts at the beginning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so you see loads of people with curtains in their hair, yeah. like proper 90s, like waistcoats. And... Yeah. You see someone wearing like those suit jackets with shoulder pads that are like huge and nice. Also, isn't that just part of the joy of watching it now, though? Because it was the 90s, and seeing those fashions and seeing how terrible everyone looked actually just makes me feel kind of warm inside. There's one one bit that's in there, uh, there's a shot of the audience, loads of people laughing, and one woman stonely (laughs) face, not laughing. So why have you picked that shot? You could have... Do you think the shots of the audience add to it? Yeah, little bit. I think they do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not the opinions no, of the no, audience. No, no, not those twats. No, that no, doesn't that's... add a single fucking thing. I just want to hear them laugh and clap like seals. I don't want to hear <laughs> what they're thinking. I think yeah. that's what Rick and Aid would say yeah. as well. Who wants to hear what free, what fans of Bottom have to say about <laughs> yeah, Bottom? Yeah, yeah. I know yeah, what yeah, that yeah. audacity to yeah. sit and talk on a vox pop about what they feel about Bottom. <laughs> Absolute what? rubbish. Who on earth would want to listen to two male and one female fans <laughs> of, sh- of that show talk about how much they love it and yeah. what they think about? Yeah, what a sexist bloody ratio to have one (laughs) woman mention comedy. Ugh. And now it's time for a quiz. What fart noises are we choosing, boys? I'm going with wet fart, sounds like this. And I'm going to go with sustained fart, which sounds like this. Question number one. Bottom Live's opening footage at the Mayflower Theatre shows Rick and Aid's dressing rooms. What number dressing rooms were they in? <sighs> no fucking clue. I'm that's gonna, that, that's Paul. I'm going to say numbers one and two. Uh, but I want to know who was in which. Oh, Sorry okay. if that wasn't clear. All right. Aid is in one because we see his first with the glasses and Rick is in two with the pants. That is correct. To completely well guessed. Well deduced. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I remember the I order. the props. The props, that I, we didn't mention that bit. That's it's the gun and the, the, gun the and glasses. And, yeah. I was going to ask that until that was too obvious. Yeah. But yeah, the guns there are almost like Chekhov's gun as well, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Anyway. All right. On to question two. Graham Taylor is likened to a lump of human excrement by Richie. But what years was he the England football manager? Okay, uh, this, uh, I believe that was me. So I'm going to say um, 1992 to 1995. I can say that's wrong, but I don't know whether we're going to pass oh. this or just can, say it's not been got. Can I Can I have a go? You can have a go. 92 to 93. No, I'm afraid it's 1990 to 93. Oh, fuck. Okay. okay. So, so he was right near the end of his tenure no when they had to go in. Yeah, I presume. Okay. They must have got rid of him, did they? I think so. Cause that's they, what the they gag is. Well, he's not currently it. England manager, so yes, they did get rid yeah. of him. He was lambasted by the tabloids. They hated him. <laughs> Question number three. How many hours did they say they were locked in the labs at the Lamb and Flag? Five cool. bloody hours. Five bloody hours is correct. Well, they're in there for two days, aren't they? So, well, but it's what... You, do they yeah. say, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. fair enough. I was but, looking for yeah. five hours, yeah. but um, you're right. It probably is longer. Okay, question number four. Name the chap who is eight inches long and three inches round. That's Paul again. Ralph. That's incorrect, I'm what? afraid. Mm, okay. Um, is it Glenn? No. Frank. Frank! Frank. Fuck! Yeah. Fuck! Fuck! I know. Oh. Thought that'd get you. Aha! Damn it. I, I wonder what his knob's like. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's no points there. So we're currently with... Paul's two, got two, two yeah. Matt, you've got zero. Yeah. Okay. Question number five. What exact date does the offer close on the Bahamas competition? Go on. 17th of July, 1986. I love that you know that. Well, you, you, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I will tell you the reason I know that is because 17th of July is my birthday. Oh, well, that's cheating, isn't it's it? It's not cheating it's at not all. really <laughs> cheating. It's you like, choose I, to be born. Yeah, I, was, I was born six years before the, the joke was even, you know, yeah. uh, valid. Do you want to tell us your bank details as well? No, so that anyone no, out there could say, Paul Tenter, 17th of July. Yeah. Okay, right. Noted. Right, okay, so that's three to Paul. Good. Name the celebrity that is referenced and pictured on the back page of The Observer that Richie's reading. Oh, God. You see his picture and you can make out his name. And he's flying fucking clue. And he's referenced, you say? Well, what I mean is he's He's there on the back of the paper. He's not referenced in the dialogue, but Rick's got that paper up for quite a while and you can clearly see a celebrity in the top left 
of the back. Oh God, page. no, I don't know. No idea. Do you want a clue? Yes. Je- Je- oh, right. I'm going to take a random stab in the dark hey. now. And Jeremy on. Beadle. Oh. Yeah. Oh, oh, fuck me! Yeah. It's no, no, no lemons. Yes, yes. Go on, yeah, have that. Yeah, prickly bottom is what I was going to say. Yeah. Let's give that one. Some I did. Man. I, I remembered seeing that. Well, I bet that's going to be a quiz question right. as well. <laughs> so you had actually noticed it. Well, that's, yes, that makes yeah, yeah. me feel less. We're always looking rasking. out for things on newspapers, aren't we? Well, you see his face as well. Anyway. Okay. Question number seven. Eddie says he was born in Southampton, but where, in fact, was Aid Edmondson born? Manchester. Just... Mm, incorrect. I am just looking for a general area. Devon. Incorrect. Okay. England. It's Yorkshire. <laughs> west. Uh, west, I believe. Okay. Yorkshire. Okay. So why does he say he's born in Southampton? To just get the a curry favour. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. So we're still with Paul's. Got three. Matt's got one, and we're on to question number eight. Everything to play for. When Richie accuses Eddie of trying to queer him up, he strikes a pose that is now often likened to which athlete online in memes. <laughs> oh. That was Paul who buzzed in first. Yes. Sprinter. <laughs> Fucking hell. The he, Jamaican sprinter. He is a Jamaican sprinter, but what's his name? Do you know? Usain Bolt. Oh, uh, I knew that. That was buying for time, I didn't Matt. Know that. You yeah. Have... I, yeah, I didn't buzz in quick enough. Oh. Yeah. Sorry. Question number nine. Don't buzz in too soon. There are four lawyers mentioned in the course of Bottom Live. Can you give me all of their names? Okay, so. That's Matt. Uh, Ken. Full name. Starling? No. No, from Ken. Doddy? Dodgy. <laughs> <We> dodgy <laughs> Ken. Well, it's actually trying <laughs> to help you out dodgy there Ken. by mouthing Dodgy Ken. It's a dodgy Ken, okay. okay. Well, and then, then the other three. Bastard and Dribble. Okay, let's give you that. Come let's, on. let's call him Ken Doddy. You got Ken. Doddy, good old Doddy. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, I only needed one name for the other ones. <laughs> That's all right. Right, so Matt, you're on two, and Paul well, is on just, four. Of course, I'm trying to help me. Wait. It's all academics. Paul's on four and you're on two. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> Question number ten. What three ways of killing himself does Eddie suggest before masturbate yourself to death? So there's quite a few options bef- before and after, but... So the mincing and stuff, that's different, isn't it? That's when he's mm. talking to on the phone. I'm going to say you gun him. hanging and electrocution before he says masturbation. Oh, so close. Oh, okay. But it's... Gas, gun, or rope. Oh, okay. All right. Paul is the winner with four to Matt's two. Well done. Good quiz. Do you want the tiebreaker for fun? Go, Go on. on. Yeah. We discussed the kicking in the bollocks of AIDS to Rick and how wonderfully acted out that was. Yeah. How many times? How did many him in the times does Eddie kick him in the I, bollocks? Now, uh, you can only really tell this going on the sound effects because they do cut away to the audience. I've, I've put my phone away, but can I buzz in with a? Yeah. Thirty-three. Oh, okay. 33? Yeah. Have you, did you count? Yeah, and yeah. I thought I got it exactly. See, I counted well, and I got 34. Uh, but there's the initial one, yeah. but but I thought you were meant on the floor. Oh, uh, okay, All no, right. I meant bollock kicks. Uh, well, look, so you're I right, would... on the floor, 33, but the initial getting okay. him on the floor. Now, look, that's very specific, so I, I would have been nowhere near that. Yeah. This yeah, was yeah. the tiebreaker, yeah, yeah. so it would have but just been whoever was... Yeah. I did expect that as a quiz question, yeah. so I did rewind it and watch <laughs> it, and I thought the way I'll remember that is the age Jesus died. So, oh, uh, well, we, this is Bottom Live. We've done it. Mm. And finally, hopefully, this will be an end to people asking us if we're going to do the live episodes <laughs> for some reason. I we mean, are... I don't want to have a go at the fans, but, uh, yeah, we said from the beginning we're going to do every single bottom thing, including the live ones, and it's the question we're asked most, are you going to do the live ones? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, we are. And, mm-hmm. yes, we'll do Guest House Paradiso as well. In the interim, if you want to get in contact, tell us how much you like the show. We're on social media, at Talking Bottom. That's on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. That's at Talking Bottom. And, of course, you can drop us an email. We're at 11 Mafficking Parade at gmail.com and also we're going to put a link to what was it the live like going and live thing. yeah going live I keep sorry uh, I keep calling yeah. it live and I keep calling it live and kicking yeah do you, do you remember the live. number that's because live oh, and kicking oh wait 9 after. 1 50, 50, 50. that's well, a gay it's, chat it's, thing it's, I'm saying <laughs> 50, 50, 50. <laughs> yeah no, um, no, no this was it started off as 081 then it was 0181 811 8181 Oh, what? 081 Brilliant. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks very much for listening, everyone. We'll be back with series three of Talking Bottom this year sometime. Uh, we don't know when, yeah. but uh, not too long. Yeah.
But before we do Series 3, we've got a little bit of a surprise. We're actually going to be talking bottom with someone that's involved with bottom. What a fucking novel idea that is. We're going to be speaking with Ed By, the director of Series 1 and 2. It's a major scoop for us. Yes, we're hugely excited to have Ed on next week, director of Bottom Series 1 and 2, and 40 episodes of Red Dwarf, amongst a load of other things, all favourites of British comedy. Very excited. So, yeah, thanks for everyone for listening and tune in next time. Take care. Bye-bye.